If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast, and it is presented, of course, by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm Ross Tucker. It is April, and we're going to dive into NFL season win totals for the first time. Very, very exciting time of year. Next week, we'll probably give Steve Fezzik will give you his NFL draft betting 101 in terms of what you need to be aware of heading into the draft. But this is a very exciting time as we take our first look at the season win totals and we've got the draft next week. Listen, I know some people only listen or watch the show youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL during the season. You're missing out. I mean, season win totals, NFL draft bets, Steve answering questions from you guys, the listeners that send them to me, Ross at Ross Tucker.com. It's amazing. Check me out on social media at Ross Tucker NFL. Uh, I'm all over it. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you're on, I'm on. Unless you're on like MySpace or Snapchat, I'm not on those. Uh, we are at Ross Tucker Pod, which is for the podcast network. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So please check that out as well. The star of this show is the only two time winner of the Super Bowl of professional football gambling. It's the Super Contest at the Westgate, the one and only Steve Fezzik at Fezzik Sports and only at Fezzik Sports on social media. You can obviously get his picks over at pregame.com. All right, a couple of disclaimers first, Steve. Number one, we are recording this a little bit earlier than we normally do, like the week before because it's spring break for my daughters. So as you're listening to this or watching this, we already recorded it. I'm giving that disclaimer because we are giving you the season win totals as of March 28th, which is when we recorded this about a week ago. So just keep that in mind. They might have changed. There might have been big news, but we thought this was a good episode to do to give you an idea of what we're thinking for these teams. And also, Steve, I guess the bigger question is, do you know exactly when DraftKings released their lines, um, their openers, and did you get in on it right away? Like, do you know when they're going to get released and you're like waiting? Or when they get released, you get a text message from somebody or an alert, and then you jump on which ones? Like, walk me through that process. Yeah, so I got guys that I work with, and yeah, they, they alerted me like, Fez, Season win numbers popped up. Apparently, at DraftKings came first, and then Caesars in some locations put up a little bit after. But they let me know. They're like, "Who do you like?" Like I'm, I magically know, and I'm like, "News to me. Send, send me over the link, and I'll take a look." And then, boom, um, without you know doing much work, but just you know, I peruse them and say, "That can't be right. That can't be right." Let's get in front of this, and uh, we always play a couple of them. That um, just by feel more than by actual, you know, having crunched the work. Um, so that's interesting. Do do they come out like late March every year? Because I'm I'm not remembering. Like in other words, if you had an idea that they came out late March, wouldn't it make sense to do the work so that you can really attack them when they first come out? Sure, but it also makes sense to work 24-7 on every college basketball game, be betting live from uh, and every XFL game from 8 a.m. until like 11 p.m. on every uh, Saturday and Sunday. So you just become a vegetable. Who has time you know, to do all this? Like, well, I guess there's no games in the middle of the night. But literally, like as a professional better, I don't mind saying it. I, I mean, I'm live betting every day nonstop. Now, during the weekdays, a lot of times there are no games during the day, but then I'm handicapping the pre-flop odds and the like. And so, yeah, I could do that with the NFL, but there's so much uncertainty in the personnel. Like we don't have all the answers yet and we won't have it until August. So it's so dynamic and the limits are so low. It's just not worth my bang for my buck to be, you know, focusing on the NFL. A lot of content providers provide great information daily and that's fantastic information, but there's just not enough good bets to be made to justify the time, frankly. 
What are the limits? Do you know approximately this time of year on the season win totals? You know, it depends by the book. So like at Caesars, once when they'll put up a number, usually they'll take two or 3,000. You know, DraftKings is the wild, wild west. If you're like our friend Paul, who's burned out his account because he's won too much money, he might get $23 on a bet. If you're a guy that bets big and hasn't won, you might be able to bet $20,000. It, it, it's all up to your accounts. And that's all just their algorithm they have and they know who wins and who doesn't and they limit you as a result. But to be fair, if you're a new account, I think it's very rare that you're limited at all. So I think if you open up a new account, at least initially you can bomb away. Yes. Ooh, okay. Well, I say this on some of the other shows sometimes. I probably don't say it enough here, but... It's really very simple. All you need to do is bet $5 on pretty much any, like baseball, money line, any of these things, and you can get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins, which is really pretty amazing if you think about it. So think about that. Um, even on the Masters, they've got awesome, absolutely awesome stuff coming up. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSS. Boost your odds during golf's first major. That's code ROSS only on DraftKings Sportsbook. Think about this. If you're a new customer, Steve, and you see a golfer to win the tournament at plus $1,000, DraftKings will boost that golfer to plus 2,000 odds for your shot at a bigger payout. Nobody plus 1,000s is winning, are they, Steve? John Rahm can win. <laughs> All that guy does is win. Um, I tell you this, the one Masters bet I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet Tiger will lose the Masters. I'm probably going to have to like bet like 60,000 to win 1,000, Ross. If Tiger Woods wins the Masters, let's just say I'm going to be working 24-7 to pay that off because I'm going to lose a lot of money. I think the true odds of Tiger Woods winning well, let's just say they're a lot less than the odds of Purdue losing in the final four. <laughs> um, got it. So that's that's our one Masters bet. Um, I almost forgot it's Masters week, Steve. Any, any other, before we get to the season win totals, any other Masters thoughts? You usually typically like the head-to-heads, right? Yeah, like in, in, in really Kentucky Derby, um, the tennis, golf, the all the pros I know they make their money, most of their money, not picking the winner, but like looking at the matchups and deciding do they like Scotty Scheffler versus John Rahm, things like that. But more often, like we we spoke last week about in baseball, how I I, I bet a head to head in baseball where I bet the Angels against uh, San Francisco, and they try to pick out you know one golfer that might have an injury that isn't playing well that maybe is overvalued and one golfer that they think is undervalued and find them in a head-to-head because directionally, if they're just kind of right in both directions, it becomes such a great bet to bet golfer A to uh, beat golfer B in the tournament. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember during COVID, man, people were betting golf like crazy. I mean, it was the one sport that was that was like happening for a while there, and people were really into it. Um, all right, before we kind of go through some of these season win totals, how would you um, how would you approach it, Steve, for our listeners that love NFL, they love betting on the NFL, how would you recommend that they look at season win totals and, and decide whether to bet now, whether to bet after the draft, or whether to bet in August? Okay, you're only allowed to bet unders right now. Let me explain why. So, and these numbers may have changed a little bit, but these are based upon the openers at DraftKings. If you average the wins on every team and what's being dealt, it turns out 8.6 adjusted for VIG is the average number on all the teams, which doesn't seem that far off because every team plays 17 games, divide by two. That means every team should win eight and a half games. Eight and a half, so close to 8.6. What's the real difference? But... Overtime rules are such that I expect there'll be a couple ties at least during the NFL season, okay? So because of that, the average should be more like maybe 8.43. Now, 8.43 wins versus 8.6, you know what? 
that's actually a significant enough difference that if you bet each and every under on all the teams, you have a slight positive expectation. And thusly, if, if, if you play over, you have a pretty big negative expectation. And because of that, it's like reaching into an urn that has maybe 54 white marbles and 46 black marbles. And the black marbles are the overs. So don't try to pick winners on overs right now because of the bias that's in that betting marketplace. Look to selectively play unders. That's where the greatest value is in the aggregates. Not to say there isn't a couple of good over bets, but for the most part, the unders are the way to look. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, people always say that, right? That unders are how you look for the season win totals. All right, before we dive into it, I do want to make sure people know when you're listening to this show, you should think about drinking a Labatt Blue. Big fan of Labatt Blue, Labatt Blue Light. If you want to take things to the next level, get together with your friends, family, drink some Labatt Blue Lights, live life to the power of we, together. Always enjoy responsibly beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. In fact, as you guys are listening to this, or maybe watching youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. I am on a beach somewhere, more than likely having an ice cold Labatt blue light, which is delicious. All right, Steve, we'll kind of go through these quickly um, just to see if you feel like there's value one way or the other, or if it sounds right to you. How about the New England Patriots? They are at seven and a half. Steve, seven and a half minus 120 to the over. You know, my first reaction is, wow, is that a low number or what? And then I started thinking about their division and, you know, the Jets are going to be so upgraded and New England's clearly the worst team in the division. So if you're clearly the worst team, seven and a half kind of you know, the worst team isn't going to win eight games. So I... I pumped the brakes on any optimism on New England. I uh, If I had to bet it, I'd bet it under. Saints are at nine and a half. I didn't realize the Saints were nine and a half. That's higher than I thought it would be. Yeah, the market got the memo that the Saints are an undervalued team, unfortunately. That's a team I've been talking about how I want to bet on going into the year and how their underlying stats were so much better than their seven and 10 record. But the market is well aware of it. No interest in the Saints. The Jets are at nine and a half. They've already priced in the Aaron Rodgers thing, even though as when we're recording this, it hasn't happened. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just wait till it gets finalized. And then this number reflects Aaron, obviously, going to the Jets. But the markets, they're skittish right now. It wouldn't surprise me if as soon as that news breaks, that season win number gets bet up to 10. I would take a piece of the Jets, most certainly under 10 with a quarterback that – could go ahead and fall off the cliff this year due to his age. Steelers are eight and a half. Steve, they always have a winning record. Always. I'm a little surprised by that. That's the one over. You nailed it. I um, I know their O-line was healthy each and every game last year. But if there's one team I would look over, and that's a tough division. But, like, you nailed it. Steelers never have a losing year. I guess it all comes down to, are they going to have a tie this year, Ross? Because if they have a tie... They'll go 8-8-1, eight, eight and one and they don't get there. Otherwise, they'll go over, right? Well, I don't see I don't see how they're worse than last year. I guess the argument would be maybe the Browns and Deshaun Watson are better, um, I guess. But by the same token, the, the Ravens might be worse with Lamar Jackson. So, all right. Steelers are – I mean, uh, the Seahawks are at 8.5. That feels a little bit low with some of the moves they've made. Yeah, I think the you could bet Seattle over. You could bet Seattle five to one. I don't think you can quite get that anymore to win the division. Look at that division. Arizona, five and a half. Rams rebuild, seven and a half. And I'd bet under if I had to bet the Rams. Um, and the Niners are high at 11 and a half. But boy, 11 and a half looks high to me. I would play the Niners under. In fact, I did at open under 11 and a half. Seattle's the one team in that division that I am bullish on. The other teams I'm bearish on. Yeah, I would lean over for Seattle. The Texans are at five and a half. Thoughts? Seems about right. You can, you're can. you basically going to win three games by accident. Can they get three more wins? You know what? I'd still play under, Ross. I still wow. think 
they're a team. Is it doesn't seem like a team like the Texans. You always hear, oh, they're a year away. They're a couple years away. It's no, they're they're a decade away. They're not going to be good forever, right? Colts six and a half. They could get Lamar, Steve. That that's kind of juicy. Yep, it all depends what quarterback they wind up getting. So we'll uh, we'll stay tuned with that. Yes, I'm kind of with you on the Rams under seven and a half. We discussed that. The Eagles are at ten and a half right now, minus one fifty to the over. Though they're going to still allow them to push their quarterback forward on every fourth down. Yes, they are. There, it's like not over. even. It wasn't even a discussion at the owner uh, at the owners' meetings. Uh, well, then I like over because that play always works. And so when fourth and one is an automatic first down, that gives the Eagles a, a nice advantage over every other team. What about the Detroit Lions, Steve? They're minus 150 to the over nine and a half. A lot of love for the Detroit Lions. I, I get it. They're an analytics darling. People have backed that team forever. Um, and, you know, they're backing it up. But I'll say this. The difference between nine and a half and 10 is enormous. I'm not going over nine and a half. Um, if, it goes, if it goes to 10, I'll play under. So when they're minus 150, Steve, at what point, like at what point is the is the juice enough that they're basically over 9.9? You know what I mean? Like they're almost over 10. Yeah. So um, every um, half win is worth about 50 cents, actually 45 cents, if you will. So they're almost there. Like if you ask me what's the Lions um, season win number. So right now I'd say it's like 9.8, 9.85 with adjusted for big. Bucks are six and a half. I don't see how the Bucks aren't going to be complete rebuild terrible this year. I would look under. Agreed. Cardinals five and a half. We talked about who knows when Kyler Murray even plays this year. Uh, Kelvin Beecham talked about him on a recent Ross Tucker football podcast. Bills are 10 and a half still with the juice minus 140. So there's there's a mispricing somewhere because if you look at the Bills, they're at 10 and a half and the Bengals are 11 and a half. And yet the Bills are still a shorter shot to win the title than the Bengals. Uh, Bills are like seven to one, the Bengals nine to one. So because of that, um, I think that the season of wins are actually priced correctly and it's the futures that are priced incorrectly. The bills are, um, they're not as good as the Bengals. That, that would be my conclusion. And if you were going to make one future bet, what's not to like about the Cincinnati Bengals getting close to 10 to one. I think you could certainly make the case. Heck the Bengals, you could say could should have won the Super Bowl the last two years and you're getting 10 to one on them. The Chicago bears seven and a half. You know, I got no feel at all for the Bears. That is a leap of faith to go from three all the way up to where they got to basically be close to a 500 team to cash. But um, did they really have much of an incentive to win last year? Um, directionally, it's certainly right to bump the Bears up a lot. Maybe this is a little bit too much, though. Wow. This is my first time looking at this because I wanted to see it with you. The Jags are 10 and a half. The Jacksonville Jaguars, 10 and a, now they're minus 140 to the under, but still. Yeah, and that's one. I hit two bets at open. I played 49ers under 11 and a half, and I played Jacksonville under 10 and a half. That is just too much respect for a Jacksonville Jaguar team that, uh, let's face it, you know, at some point you have to look at the history of an organization. The Jacksonville Jaguars are never good enough to be priced as an elite team in any futures market. That is, uh, that's stunning to me. I, I guess they're taking into account how bad the rest of the division is because the Texans, Titans, and Colts numbers are all real bad. So maybe it makes a little bit more sense there. Um, the Browns, nine and a half, they're, they got some belief in Deshaun Watson coming back. Yeah, you know, the Browns, for whatever reason, they're a betters darling. Money always comes on Cleveland. Even when Cleveland, remember the year they didn't win any games? The Sharps were betting on Cleveland each and every week, Ross. It's the strangest thing. Um, that team perennially seems to be overvalued. And they were supposed to win 10 games last year. And then, of course, Watson, you know, um, by the time he got back, and then, and then he couldn't play any better than the other guy. It, um, 
They, well, that's what Cleveland does. That's that's what happens when you live on the shores of the Cuyahoga River. You disappoint. You get depressed. You don't play well. Packers seven and a half. Haven't seen that in a while. Obviously, they're priced for Jordan Love, not Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and Jordan Love, you can tell, you can say he's ready. I I I don't see it. I think the Packers are in rebuild, and it'll. If I had to play that, I would certainly play it under. Panthers are at seven and a half. We know they're going to have a number one overall pick quarterback, although I don't know. They gave Dalton decent money. You know, how do you know how many games Dalton starts? Yeah. And again, that's a situation you look at the division and it certainly helps to have an easy division to play in. I still think um, with a, a likely rookie quarterback, I'd go under if I had to play it. Giants. Or only eight and a half. I guess I thought they might be higher than that, but in that division, maybe that makes sense. The Sharps think that the Giants were very well coached, but extremely fortunate. And, you know, an example would be the win against Tennessee when they get the late touchdown, go for two, and, and they get it to win by one. Too many games like that over the course of a season. So if I had to play Giants, I'd go under. Vikings over eight and a half? They're always eight and a half, aren't they? And they always <laughs> finished around 500. And they always had these weird games against teams like Arizona that could go either way and come down to a 50-yard field goal one way or another. I don't know what to do with the Vikings. Cowboys are nine and a half. They won a bunch of games last year. I think the, the Cowboys should be able to win 10. I mean, I don't want to be... They're a public team. I think they'll go higher. If you're going to bet them, that'd be the rare one. I'd say bet it now before it probably inflates. I agree. I, I like the Brandon Cooks and and uh, Stephon Gilmore additions. I kind of like the Cowboys at that number. Raiders seven and a half. They're always seven and a half. You know, it's true, but you know they downgraded a quarterback. I was a fan of Carr. You know, there's this issue with Waller. I don't know what went on with Waller. So here's the stud tight end. And one week I'm reading an article about how he's getting married in Vegas with the, the, to, to, to a WNBA star Plum. And then the next week, he's shipped out of town for nothing, basically a third rounder. There has to be some investigative report. And then our other tight end gets injured like or has an issue with Moreau right after. So uh, I think the Raiders are in for another bad year. Broncos eight and a half. They got some faith in, in uh, Sean Payton. Defense is good. Coach is good. Quarterback has to improve. If anything, I'd look over. We talked about the Ravens uh, a week ago, kind of already being priced that Lamar might not be there with the eight and a half number. You mentioned the Bengals, 11 and a half they are, Steve. That's pretty rich to be going over. Yeah, I don't want any part of over 11 and a half. If you're going to bet the Bengals, bet them 10 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Dolphins are at nine and a half in that tough AFC East. You know, two is one concussion away from like, being gone for the year um, that uh, it all comes down to to his health. And I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get, be able to get through the year with their quarterback situation and the health stuff, the Niners over an 11 and a half seems high. That's the other bet that I hit. So I hit Jacksonville under 10 and a half. I hit the Niners under 11 and a half. I don't understand that number. Uh, you're lined at 11 and a half. You need to have an elite quarterback and not an injured you know, Mr. Irrelevant at quarterback in Brock Purdy. I have no confidence in Trey Lance. Um, also, I go back to, you know, for years when Jimmy G wasn't quarterbacking the Niners, they lost every game seemingly. So I don't I don't get that number. I played under. I mean, they have the same number as the Chiefs. How is that possible? It's an opening number. It won't be the same at close. That is wild to me. The 49ers with two injured quarterbacks have the same number as Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, last couple, Falcons and Commanders are both at seven and a half. You like either one of those? No opinion on either one of those. You know, going back to that San Francisco number, Ross, when you ask me, Steve, can you explain that number? I'll go back to the movie The Terminator. I love this line where Reese goes back in time and, he, and, and they don't believe that he's from the future. And the authorities, the cops are like, well, why didn't you just like bring ray guns and like really high tech stuff to stop the so-called Terminator? And, and Reese gets frustrated, the protagonist. And he's like, 
I don't know. I didn't build the thing. You know, so I didn't set these numbers. I'm just commenting on them. <laughs> um, last one is the Chargers at nine and a half, Steve. You know, every year the Chargers underperform, but it sure seems like they should win 10 games, right? I mean, the uh, the Chargers are perennial underachievers. They're like the Angels in Southern California. Is this the year they finally live up to their expectation? Maybe. Check him out on social media. That's the key, at Fezzik Sports. By the way, we're only about a month away from Mother's Day, so make sure you go to myfrontpagestory.com. Use the code RTFP10. I'm just telling you, it's the best Mother's Day gift you could ever get any of the moms in your life. Your mom, your grandma, your wife, if she's a mother. Trust me, myfrontpagestory.com. We'll give you a code there, RTFP10. Next week, we'll start to dive into the NFL draft a little bit, and we'll get to some of your email questions, so send them in. Ross at RossTucker.com. Other than that, good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft, all available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.